If you want to understand the factory pattern in Java, you've come to the right place. The trouble is, there's more than one. There are four powerful creational design patterns commonly referred to as the factory pattern. The static factory method, factory method, abstract factory, and simple factory. Watch to the end and you'll have a good understanding of all of them. Let's start with the static factory method, which is super simple but super powerful. The problem is that this doesn't compile. We want to create a temperature that's either in Celsius or Fahrenheit, but constructors won't let us do this. The static factory method lets us work around this limitation. We make the constructor private and create two static methods of Celsius and of Fahrenheit that return instances of temperature. This has several advantages over a traditional constructor. Firstly, it has a name which makes code more readable by providing inbuilt documentation. Secondly, we can create factories with the same parameter types, which we couldn't do with overloaded constructors. And we can also return cached instances or subtypes. There are some disadvantages though. Constructors are easier to find because they have special handling and IDEs and documentation. Static factory methods are not inherited by subclasses and they can't be used in reflection. But typically you can work around these limitations quite easily. Unlike constructors, static factory methods don't have to create new instances. They can return cached instances. The Java standard library uses this for boxing primitive types like boolean value of. Let's talk about simple factory, which is the bridge between static factory method and abstract factory, the most powerful factory pattern. But first, if you're learning something, consider subscribing. I make videos about Java all the time. Simple factory is super simple. The idea is to extract your factories into a separate class. Sometimes it's just nicer to extract the creational logic into a new class. You don't need to just use static methods though. Here, the pizza factory has an instance variable which is applied to every pizza that the factory creates. So we can create specialized pizza factories depending on the type of dough that we want to apply. And you can make your factories even more complex by including logic in the factory, but it's starting to get a bit messy. Maybe there's a better way. Factory method, the original factory pattern from the gang of four. Here's the problem. The transport manager needs to create transport, but which type varies at runtime, which becomes unwieldy as the number of transport types grows. The idea is to move the creation logic to an abstract method and create a subclass for each transport type. So we have a specialized subclass for each transport. But take a step back for a second. Was that actually worth it? I'm not a big fan of factory method. I think the benefits are abstract and it has some serious drawbacks. The better alternative, in my opinion, is dependency injection. Make transport factory an interface. Then we could inject an appropriate simple factory into the transport manager, but there's an even better way. Using the magic of functional interfaces, we can implement transport factory with a constructor reference. And if you're not sure what that means, I have an entire video explaining interfaces in detail. So the final boss of factory patterns is the abstract factory, the most powerful factory pattern of all. The problem the abstract factory solves is families of related objects. Here we're creating a game with different environments, and which enemies and weapons are relevant vary by environment. We define an abstract factory to describe the family, and create a concrete implementation for each environment that supply the relevant enemies and weapons. Now we use the appropriate factory in context, and switch worlds by changing the factory without needing to change any of our other code. Abstract factory is powerful, but it's only useful for this shape of problem, families of related objects. Common examples are look and fields for graphical user interfaces, database drivers, and testing. In summary, the static factory method is simple, powerful, and everywhere. Simple factory encapsulates object creation logic into a separate class. The factory method delegates object creation to subclasses, but try to use it sparingly. And the abstract factory supports families of related objects. If you liked the video, like the video. It helps get this sort of thing in front of more people.